right now. I want to welcome to the program the executive director of the NRA's Institute for Legislative Action, Chris Cox, with us once again. Chris, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, Cam. How are you? I am good. Thanks very much for coming on the program. And congratulations on uh, what was a very good night for gun owners in the Second Amendment and the NRA around the country. You know, Cam, it was. we talked yesterday before the elections, and we talked about the role that gun owners not only could play but needed to play. Uh, Liberty needed a big win, and she got one last night. Uh, and it's great to have a team. It's great to have a strategy. It's great to execute that strategy and, and see it work and get the results that you're looking for. But ultimately, there were gun owners and NRA members and supporters all across this country and in these key states that once again answered the call. They saw that freedom was at stake. They saw that freedom was being attacked, and they stood up, and they made their voices heard through the power of the vote. And it was a grassroots, tremendous victory, and I'm proud proud to be an NRA member today. Well, listen, I am too, and I know we've got millions of us across the country uh, who are just as proud. Some of them may be a little uh, bleary-eyed, and uh, uh, their feet hurt from, you know, walking neighborhoods and knocking on doors, but... They've got to feel good about uh, their efforts this year. I mean, you go down the list uh, in in the Senate, uh, good gracious, Arkansas, Colorado, Georgia, Kansas, Kentucky, Iowa, Montana, Nebraska, North Carolina, South Dakota, West Virginia. Uh, All of these uh, were were NRA-endorsed candidates. We still have some open races, some races where we don't necessarily know uh, who the victor is going to be here. But, uh, I mean, the the NRA, uh, we have a a lot of pro-gun senators, including some new ones. Uh, who are coming to Washington, D.C. Well, there's no question about that. And Michael Bloomberg came up four or five votes short in his gun control agenda last time it came up in the Senate, and his margin just doubled uh, because of these candidates who support this freedom replacing those who didn't. And so it was a strategically, it was a great night from a U.S. Senate standpoint. But we had some big governor's races, Cam. We talked about the importance of Wisconsin and Florida Mm -hmm. uh, going into 2016 in the presidential election. It was critically important that we win those two states. And then to throw a little icing on the cake with, with Maryland, I mean, just some shocking and great, significant victories for the Second Amendment all across the country. Absolutely. And some big house, some big house races. You know, we talked about this politician down in Arkansas, too. And one of these takeaways, you, you look at, at what the sentiment was leaving, and did, did we have Second Amendment supporters who were backing away from the NRA? Nowhere. Did we have gun control supporters backing away from Michael Bloomberg and Barack Obama all across the country? We had an Arkansas a politician running for Congress who was F-rated by the NRA. They used the Democratic Party in Arkansas, sent out mailers using Wayne's photo and quotes from a fundraising email or a fundraising letter to suggest that he was our preferred candidate. NRA members are smarter than that. Uh, Gun owners aren't going to be duped and fooled by these politicians. That politician got beat, and he was up five or six points going into last night, and it's because gun owners refused to stand for that sort of uh, nonsense. And so, again, these were big House races, big Senate races, big governor's races, and it puts us on the right path going into 16 to really hit the ground running this year. We need to do everything we can in 2015 to build to build our program and build NRA membership even bigger and stronger so we can deliver the ultimate prize in two years and, and win a pro-gun president in the White House. Absolutely. Uh, you know, in fact, I've already had folks asking, uh, all right, do we have the 60 votes needed for a right to carry reciprocity in the Senate? I think the answer to that is yes, but we heard the president say earlier today that uh, uh, he won't hesitate to uh, to veto legislation that uh, that he doesn't agree with. And I I I feel pretty confident in saying, Chris, that uh, President Obama not a fan of uh, the idea of national right to carry reciprocity. Well, and President Obama is a is a partisan ideologue. He's not capable of changing. He's not going to. He doesn't view this as a as a any sort of referendum on his policies, which certainly the American people and the voters felt differently. And so we, we expect more of the same from the president. He also said that he has, his, he has his pen and a phone, and we clearly think that the abuses of the executive authority will be rampant. Uh, but what this does, and, and we talked about it yesterday, uh, these federal judges aren't going to be rubber stamped in huge numbers. Supreme Court justices aren't just going to be rubber stamped the way they were with with the the last two. And so 
this was a great strategic win as far as from a, a legislative and, and judicial strategy standpoint, but we still have our work cut out for us. We still have a president who uh, the, his unfinished business is try to put this organization and our cause out of business, and we have to do everything we can every day to fight him on that, and that's what we're going to do proudly every day. All right, and, and, and to that end, one last question, uh, Chris. In Washington State, uh, we did see this ballot initiative uh, regarding universal background checks, pass uh, did not get the 90 percent of the uh, uh, support of the public that the gun control advocates claim that it has, but it, it looks like it did pass. And it, I would expect that we'll see more of these uh, types of ballot initiatives around the country, uh, given the political makeup, not just of Congress, but of the uh, the, the new pro-gun state legislatures that we now have uh, around the country. Is this something that, that uh, you and other folks at the NRA's Institute for Legislative Action uh, have thought about uh, how to respond to and how to push back on? Well, we, we have, and it's certainly going to be a challenge. And they certainly will try to replicate what they did in Washington State and Nevada and Arizona and, and certainly states like Connecticut and, and Maryland and New York and New Jersey. That being said, uh, Michael Bloomberg and Bill Gates and some other billionaires were able to buy a ballot referendum. You know, they, their money, along with a news media that was in bed with them from day one, not giving gun owners a fair shake on this. The, the flip side is law enforcement opposed it because they know that the so-called universal background check scheme won't have an impact on crime. Gun owners opposed it because they're going to be ensnared and tripped up and made into criminals based on a stupid policy uh, that they were able to get through. That being said, we are going to continue the way we always do. We're going to get up every day and fight, whether it's in the legislative arena, in the legal arena, or in the political arena, and and dial that back as best we can. And we will. We've been called hard-headed and and dogged in the past, and that's a compliment. And we are, and we're not going to stop until we regain any of the freedoms that we've lost, including in Washington State. Yeah, it's it's a disappointment, no question about it. But overall, if you look at where Michael Bloomberg spent money on his candidates needing to buy these politicians, needing to remake the United States Senate, he got annihilated by law-abiding NRA members and gun owners across this country who agreed with us that their freedoms were not for sale. And we've, we, have, we play a major role, Cam. We talked about it yesterday on your program. The NRA and NRA members play a significant role in shaping the national conversation and shaping the national landscape when it comes to these sorts of races. We had a great victory last night. We should all we should all take a deep breath. We should all be proud of one another, all of our fellow NRA members and gun owners who got out there and, and worked hard and, and put out put up yard signs and knocked on doors and did all the, the grassroots work that it takes to win these sorts of elections. It was a great night. But as you know, this job never goes away because our opponents never go away. Uh, we're we're going to be sitting down tomorrow and going through you know our data analysis. They're going to be doing the same thing. You know, Wayne talked about those who don't participate. Your spot will be filled by those who, who disagree with you. Mm -hmm. So we have to we have to be proud of each other, proud of our efforts, but we have to always remember that we have a job to do, and we're going to work every day to make sure that we can continue to pass this freedom down to our kids and our grandkids because they 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 demand it and deserve it. And those who fight and die for our country uh, have earned it from us. Chris Cox, thank you so much, sir, for coming on the program. Again, congratulations. Uh, give our best to the uh, all of the folks there at the NRA's Institute for Legislative Action and look forward to talking to you very soon. Well, Cam, and thank you and thank all your listeners for uh, not only tuning in but recognizing the challenges we face and why it was so important to win last night. And, and thanks for making it happen. And I, I look forward to being with you again soon. All right, we'll talk again soon. Chris Cox, join us, uh, Executive Director of NRA's Institute for Legislative Action.